So today we are talking about open platform. I've been wanting to do a video on this. I was actually going to chart this on my coin score sheet. I, I got into the process, but I ended up stopping because just so many ICOs came at once. This one, I think you guys will like. I'm super excited about this. Let's get started. Hey there YouTube and welcome to altcoin picks first I want to say thanks we still have a steady amount of people joining the channel I love that I am always excited when we see that number going up now Stefanos and I haven't made a video in a while he got super sick I got super busy with work we had two people come from uh, a different state and it just got super busy but I'm pretty sure the videos will start increasing and Nate which is actually a friend of mine in my main group that I've known for probably eight months and then Joshua have bought the equipment and will be making videos super soon so we'll have four people meaning double the videos we have right now so my goal will be around 12 videos a week if possible that's only three from each of us start with something lower maybe six or ten either way the videos will increase a lot which means more content for you guys and that is the whole purpose of this also, don't forget to jump into my Discord. We're revamping that, getting more people in there. The MVPs, and we have top MVPs, are really getting involved, and I love it. Don't forget to check out my coin score sheet. Once you become an MVP, you get access to that. That one is evolving every single day, and that's where we're putting most of our effort in right now. Anyways, let's get started on this coin review. Also, forgot to say, don't forget to smash that like button, and of course, smash that subscribe button below. So of course, what does this coin review consist of? We're gonna look at what is open platform, the open tokens purpose, their team, their advisors, their competition, and their partners, if they have a prototype, the market cap, their roadmap, and then we'll end it all with the pros and cons. So what is open platform? It's the first and only payment infrastructure and platform that enables developers to accept any crypto on any blockchain utilizing any application payment scheme. So this enables developers to accept crypto in similar ways as the application would run and update their backend in a centralized fiat transaction. It will process the application payment scheme, for example, one-off purchases, monthly subscription, and in-game currency while accepting crypto. You can track, verify, and authorize users who have purchased on the blockchain and then confirm that a purchaser of a digital asset from the application does indeed get access to that asset. And then it will update the application layer and database via a developer-friendly API. So Open allows developers to replace the App Store or App platforms through the open state and open scaffolds. Scaffold enables developers to plug and play their payment scheme and accept payments from end users in any crypto onto their platform. So open state enables apps to track which users bought what and serves as a proof of receipt for that purchase, essentially enabling the app to verify and authenticate the user's access to the app and the asset. And then the open wallet enables end users to track their various purchase goods or receipts of purchase across all the many apps they engage with. So Open plans to build a decentralized marketplace for apps that act to incentivize the adoption of the Open platform. They pretty much want to be the Steam, the Apple App Store, the Google Play Store of applications who adopt the acceptance of a blockchain and crypto payments. So what about the open tokens purpose? The token enables the development and activation of payment scaffolds on the chain. You can use the open token to stake scaffolds for spam and scaffold fraud deterrence. So 3% of the transaction is used as a type of network gas fee. The fee is sent automatically to the developer's growth pool, refilling the supply and providing sustainable growth. So developers are incentivized to onboard open platforms with airdrops supplied by the developer's growth pool. By integrating their applications, the developers bring payments. Each payment supplies the 3% fee to the developer's growth pool, and the developer's growth pool is used to incentivize more developers to join the open community, thus solving the two-sided market dynamic problem. So now for their team, and we're gonna talk about three people. First, we have Ken, who's their CEO, and he scaled Real Money Casino app development company to an eight figures and achieved number one in iTunes in the UK, which is great. And then it grew the average spend in the app from $300 to $3,000 per user. That's huge. It shows he has experience handling this. Also, he was invited to be a tech speaker at Yahoo. 
another big thing. Next we have Andrew. So this one's kind of weird. He's a, if you looked at his LinkedIn, it shows he's a software developer at Research in Motion. That's where he kind of started. And then was a staff software engineer at Pivotal Labs. So an interesting note though, as you can see here, it shows that he was the lead, or he was on lead engineering team for Facebook for the BlackBerry 10 OS and scaled over 1 million daily activities. Now, I don't really see this on the LinkedIn unless he was contracting with one of his companies, maybe Pivotal Labs. Either way, I didn't see Facebook. So if that's right, that's some great experience there. After that, I wanna look at Dennis Lewis, which he's right here. So Dennis Lewis is the Director of Marketing at Open Platform and has over 14 plus years of experience in marketing and management experience. And he's actually been in the IT world since 1997, so he has over 20 years there. Those are my three people I like. So their team isn't extremely amazing, nothing like Chain or even Fusion, but it's a pretty big team and they seem to have some significant experience. Next, let's look at their advisors. So the two advisors I wanna talk about first is Will Bunker. So he built the dating site that became Match.com. He's also a Silicon Valley partner and mentor for the Founder Institute. So he's obviously done some big things. The Match.com is, is really big. After that, we have Roger Lim right here. So this guy is an advisor for some really big ICOs. We have Ochain, uh, Tomocoin, I don't know if I said that right, sorry. Bluezelli, The Key, Self Key, and Jet8, and he's the founding partner at Neo Global Capital. So this guy seems to be in the advising role right now of blockchain projects, and he's been on some successful ones. So that's great to see. So their advisors, again, not huge people that can really change the industry or CEOs of big banks or whatnot, but they still have some great ones and something we all like to see, right? So next, let's look at their competition. And their main one is BitPay. So this company has been around since 2011, which is an invoicing platform that allows businesses to store, spend, and bill customers in Bitcoin. They strictly allow Bitcoin as a payment, and that's all. So what's important to note, and something that I've actually been looking into, the Lamborghini dealership in Newport that everybody talks about where you can buy a Lambo or some very nice supercars in Bitcoin actually uses BitPay to accept it. They actually they don't get the Bitcoin. You send your money to BitPay, then BitPay sends cash to the dealership. So you can see that this is huge. This is used in many other companies allowing people to buy some really big things. And Open is similar to BitPay, but is more comprehensive payment solution, giving the ability for customers to pay with not only Bitcoin, but altcoins, which again is huge. Granted, I don't mind paying Bitcoin, so I don't think that's a big negative for BitPay to have. So now let's check out their partners. Now it looks like they have about two, maybe three partners. You can kind of argue for the third one. I couldn't find directly on their website that shows their partners or like a picture that shows who they are. So I had to go on their medium and show where they had announcements of them adding new partners. First, we have Zensoft. This is a 150 plus employee tech powerhouse that specializes in leveraging cutting edge tools to make the software development process streamlined and efficient for its clients. This one seems pretty big and probably their biggest partner that they have. You can check out this Medium post again. It's on the open platform section and it's pretty detailed. And this is what I like to see. Many don't do this. They just have a quick announcement. I don't like when they do that. This is pretty awesome. Next we have Crypto Racing League. So this one's kind of different. It looks like it's a game. It's a racing game that operates on the Ethereum platform that allows players to purchase and customize cars, which are used to compete in tournaments and other special races. The more races the player wins, the more cars they collect and the more rare automotive parts they can receive. So this idea reminds me of an Android game called CSR Racing 2. I don't know if you ever played this. I actually got into it for a while, which is like a drag racing. You win, you can win parts, and you can go against people, win uh, their currency. From their description, this sounds like this. Granted, I have no idea. It could be completely different. I just wanted to bring that up that this is what it kind of seems similar to. After that, we have Draper Dragon. And so the reason I said they don't really have three, it's almost like two and a half partners is because they said they're investing in the open platform. So that's not 100% a partner. But Draper Dragon has invested right here 
and numerous groundbreaking companies like Ledger, YePay, and Telegram. Open Platform could jump on that list. If they do great, we'll see. So those are their two and a half <laughs> partners. Not the best thing. They definitely need to work on this. So for the prototype, they have, if you go to their YouTube, they have a series of videos that give you an idea how easy it is to use the open platform to make an on-chain payment. Right here, you have open platform, you can search for that. They have many videos here, MVP implementation. They have this right here, nine minute and 49 minute video that has a payment scaffold demonstration. Now I was gonna show you one of these, I was actually gonna show you the MP M MVP implementation, but it was four minutes. I didn't really want to have a four minute segment of just their video. Go check it out. Search their name, open platform on YouTube and go look at how easy it is. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's so great to see that. So their scaffold payment technology is already live and the application can be integrated and utilized on the opens tech. It's great to see that they're moving along. They have something there. Again, one of our biggest pet peeves is when a project has nothing. Now for their market cap. We're looking at $30 million hard cap, eight cents per open token, 500 million circulating supply, which is 50% of the 1 billion total supply. Now the thing is, they have reached their hard cap in the pre-sale. Meaning, if you haven't got in the pre-sale, you can't get in now. You have to wait for it to hit exchange, and then you can jump in. But I mean, from the look of ICOs lately, jumping in at the exchange <laughs> hasn't been a bad idea. Stuff like Blockport, Axe Buyer went under half for a brief period of time. Maybe not Blockport, but Axe Buyer went way under um, their ICO. So if you're interested in this, wait for the exchange, jump on it. After that, let's look at their roadmap. Now, if you check their roadmap, this is where things get super exciting. Starting in June, they have the developer beta program that opens SDK 1.0. Then we have July 1.0 goes live on the Ethereum platform and the open API and open wallet are released. Also in July, the open SDK 2.0. So they have a lot happening in June and July, which is next month and the month after. So this could be big for, especially if we're able to get into a bull market, then I think ICOs like this that have a lot of things happening can really blow up. After that, we go all the way to December 2018. We have the update to the Open 2.0 available through the Ethermint and then the IPFS integration. Then we go to February 2019. It's the creation of an open blockchain to act as an independent sidechain to Ethereum. And then the roadmap finishes with April 2018 update to Open 3.0 multi-coin integration on the open wallet. So again, this is about a year's worth of a roadmap coming ahead. Now, I 100% expect them to update this roadmap, but it's still awesome to see that they have a lot going on in the next few months. Now, just a quick look at the pros and cons of the open platform. And of course, this is all my opinion. So first, they have a working product. Always great to see. After that, this is a much needed project in the crypto space. Time and time again, people don't like investing in crypto because they don't think you can actually go and buy something especially something big. Now, I'm trying to prove that wrong. The next bull run, hopefully you'll see what I can get. Right now using BitPay, something I was talking about earlier. <laughs> we'll see. So, and it's not a Lambo, just so you guys know. <laughs> it has super hype behind it. Sold out in pre-sale. I know there was a few YouTubers that were all about this. They have 32,000 Twitter followers, 56,000 Telegram members. Now that doesn't directly correlate to success in ICO, but it's still good to see that there's some hype around it. And then, of course, we just watched or just went over their roadmap. They have a pretty exciting roadmap for the next year. Now for their cons. Their team isn't super duper amazing. Neither are their advisors. They don't got anybody that stands out to be like blow, mind-blowing amazing. Their competition, BitPay, is already established and being used by many huge companies and to buy many big things. And again, they've been around since 2011 something that is kind of hard to fight with right now because being around for a while is something that we all look for. And then a con, the ICO is sold out, so you have to wait to buy it in the exchange. Now this could be a pro and con, depending on when it gets on the exchange, what the price is. If it dips, it's a huge pro. If it goes up two times, five times, then it's a con. That's my video on Open Platform. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your feedback, your suggestions, anything what you guys think we can do to make this channel better don't forget to smash that like button and of course 
please smash that subscribe button below and I'll see you next time.